Hello everyone and welcome to this section. In this section, we're going to discuss what we call it edge detection, which is a very important uh, kind of a feature um, extraction technique that we can use for self-driving cars, for any applications, to go beyond you know, the color selection basic scheme that we had before. So up to this moment, we learned how to uh, obtain an image and actually try to change, for example, or extract different colors from it. So we knew how to detect, for example, lanes within an image. How can we extract the white pixels within it, within a grayscale image, within a colored image? We also know right now how to convert, for example, from um, colored scale to a grayscale, to HSV, to whatever scale that we have, uh, we have covered so far. We also learn how can we um, take an image and apply a kind of a convolution on it to blur the image, to do whatever we want with it, okay? To sharpen it and so on and so forth, okay? Now to one of the most important features, kind of detection, uh, like techniques that we wanna do or wanna use is what we call it edge detection and gradient calcula calculation. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so let's assume that actually that's, that's pretty much, that's me here in a webcam and actually that's one of the projects we're gonna be doing. We're gonna apply all the techniques we're gonna be using right now, using your uh, webcam, so you can develop your own, you know, kind of edge detec detection algorithm on your own, which is pretty fun. All right, so let's take a look. So let's assume, again, I'm gonna start from the basics because this is kind of a little bit confusing to some, uh, some students. So here, let's assume that I have three pixels the first pixel is white, which is 255 colors. And then as we go in the X direction, we're gonna go to zero, all right? And then as we move forward, we go to 255, okay? Which means I'm going from bright to dark to bright again, okay? All right. Okay, so that's an image. Okay, what can I extract from this? What we could do that we could obtain what we call the gradient out of this image, okay? In simple terms, we're just gonna get the difference between the pixels. So what is the difference, for example, from 255 to zero? We actually, you're going, in a way, down, right? You're going from bright to dark, okay? So the change here is kind of negative, right? So as you guys can see here, we're going down. That's why you will see, okay, maybe that's an edge. That's an edge detection. That's kind of, you know, something is happening. Something unique is happening within the image. Or, as you guys can move forward, as you might reach a state where you're actually gonna go, let's say, from dark to bright, okay? As you, guys, as you guys can see here, we're going from dark, let's say, to bright, right? So that's kind of another edge, you know, going from zero to let's say 255, okay? And that's pretty much kind of what we call the first order differentiation. It's a very simple term. We just get, you know, like the difference between the pixel that I'm going to minus the pixel that I have right now, which is zero minus 255, okay, in a way, divided by whatever step size we're gonna be going through. Again, that's in a very simple, uh, like, kind of nutshell, okay? All right, that's how can we detect uh, edges within an image, okay? Okay, so how can we obtain the actual thing mathematically? Again, it's, 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 um, uh, we can apply, again, kernels, which is used for convolutions, but it's kind of a unique kernel that can tell me the gradients, okay? Again, I'm not gonna go through the entire math of it, but in simple form, what we do is that we actually take an image, we apply that kernel application or the gradient application in, in a specific direction. It's either in the X direction, so you're subtracting, for example, the pixel and getting grad the gradients along one direction, or the Y direction, okay, in a simple form, okay? Along the X and Y axes, all right? And this calculation is what we call the Sobel calculation, which is a Sobel in a simple term. We can get Sobel X, which is the gradient across the X direction, can get Sobel Y, which is the gradient across the Y direction. And then from these two, we can come up with, you know, like we can do a lot of applications. We can come up actually up with, with the magnitude of the strength of the edge, which is in each pixel now, I have two directions in a way. I have a gradient that's going the X direction, I have a gradient that goes the Y direction. If you guys recall, I can get the magnitude by getting the square root of the first value squared plus the second value squared. All right, I can get kind of an approximation to the strength by just summing up the absolute values, or I can get even the direction of my, or the orientation of my edge, which is very important. This is very important, I'm gonna actually use it extensively in, in a lot of uh, future projects in this course, which is simply by getting the kind of the angle, okay, by getting GY, or the gradient in the Y direction, divided by the gradient in the X direction. All right, again, 
I don't want to be confused. Here, we're simply going to use two sobols, two again matrices, apply to them the image, okay? GX will give me the gradient along the X direction. This is the matrix, okay? Don't worry about it. Don't bother about these numbers, okay? We're going to get an actual feel application of it. And then we're going to apply GY to the image, okay? So we're going to use our image A. We're going to apply GX. We're going to apply GY to it, the two like kernels. That will give me two gradients, okay? So I have gradients in the X, gradient in the Y. Mix them together somehow to come up with simply magnitude and angle at each pixel, okay? All right. So let's get started. So the next gradient we're going to be using, the next kind of, you know, like edge detection algorithm we're going to be applying. So we have Sobel X, okay? We have Sobel Y. The third one is what we call Laplacian, okay? So Laplace, again, and it looks, you know, very, it's just kind of a fancy name, but it's very simple. Simply, it's a second order uh, differentiation in a very simple form, okay? So the Laplacian edge detector, again, can be used just using one kernel. So it's only one kernel that gives me the second order differentiation, and that's pretty much as a kernel. I have four, minus one everywhere, and have zeros here in the corners. It can create again the second order derivative, okay, of, of basically the uh, of the image. And the only problem with the Laplacian, I'm gonna show you as well in a real world application, that it's, you know, these uh, kind of, you know, um, uh, derivatives are extremely noisy because you're getting the second order derivative. You take the image, you actually differentiate it once, and then you get the second order derivative of it, okay? So that's what the kernel looks like. And here, that's my, uh, simply my gradient uh, gradient calculation. So if you guys can see here, that's my, um, that's the edge detection, okay? That's for the first order detection. That's that's why you, here you'll see this first order differentiation. So if you have, for example, this image, which is, you know, kind of like, let's say, um, like dark and going up to bright, okay? So if you get the first order differentiation, so that's fx, if you get dfx by dx, that will mean, you know, that we have, okay, that, that means they have an edge, right? All right, if I get the second order differentiation, that means, you know, since I'm going up, that means here I have a positive derivative, and then I'm gonna go here to a zero crossing, which is a very important point, and then here I'm going down, the kernel, the derivative is going down the first order one, that means I'm having a second, again, uh, kind of, you know, peak toward the negative side, okay? And the second, when you obtain the second order differentiation, all right? So how can we detect edges in the first and second order? So in the first order, okay, we actually get just the peak, which is perfect. However, in the Laplacian transformation, or Laplacian edge detection, we get what we call the zero crossing. When we cross from a positive to negative, that means, oh, that's mean an edge when it comes to Laplacian, all right? That's again, you know, kind of an, like, a, like an overview, general intuition or overview of the Laplacian. And that's again, the third kind of edge detection we're gonna be using. So now we know Sobel X, we know Sobel Y, now we know Laplacian, and now to the most important one of all, and that's what we're gonna be using, you know, most in most of the course, is what we call it the canny edge detection, okay? Canny edge de detection is actually a beautiful algorithm. It just makes, you know, the gradient very clean, very smooth, and that's what we're gonna be using to even like draw like, you know, kind of a cartoon of us, per se, using canny edge detection. First step is we do smoothing, okay? So we take an image, we actually smooth the image with a Gaussian filter. Again, I'm not gonna dig into the math of it. The whole idea is, we, first of all, we take the image, we just smooth it up first. Second step, we obtain the gradient. So we obtain the gradient magnitude at each direction of my smooth image, okay? It's very simple. Third step, okay, we do what we call it non-maximum suppression or thinning. We simply zero out all the pixels that are not the max. So we just keep kind of the maximum, maximum value within a specific direction. All right, and then afterwards we apply what we call a thresholding. Okay, so thresholding, we're just gonna keep, for example, like a specific threshold. Beyond that threshold, we'll keep anything else. We're just gonna kill, kill it basically, or like you know, like um, like zero it out in a very simple form. Okay, and that's why we call it hysteresis thresholding. Okay, long story short, uh, canny edge detection is again, it's kind of you know, it's the same idea as having gradient calculation. However, before and after, we clean it up a little bit. Before, we smooth it up first, apply the edge detection, and then afterwards, we simply get the threshold or obtain just the maximum values to get the real deal or the real edges only. We ignore everything else, okay? 
all right, actually we're going to have, you know, kind of a live application right now to show us, you know, how can we apply Sobel X, Sobel Y, Laplacian, and Canny Edge Detection. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that section and see you in the next section. We're actually going to start code this example. All right. Thank you and see you in the next section.